Disclaimer, I am not a knife fighting professional. There's probably things in here that I'm gonna get wrong. This is our best assessment of how to keep a beautiful woman safe. And a further disclaimer, look up your local laws and use common sense. This video is for entertainment purposes only. I am in no way responsible if you attempt to replicate what we do in this video, thereby hurting yourself or others. Though we use rubber training knife in this video, it can still do damage, as you'll see in this video. Also know that using a knife against an unarmed attacker in most any country will probably land you in jail. Personally, I would rather learn how to defend myself in those dangerous scenarios like those we filmed rather than leave my protection up to chance or my ability to escape the attacker. It's a scary world out there for unprotected women, so I, like many others, have taken the liberty of better preparing and protecting myself from it. I fully support that stance and mentality. Now please don't skip through the safety brief at the beginning of the video. I know it's not as exciting as knife fighting, but it's just as important and needs to be listened to. All right, so we're here on the beach. We've got our spot laid out. Probably gonna be right about in here. Good chance one or both of us is gonna be going on the ground today and I don't want anybody to get hurt. But this is the perfect place to practice knife fighting. Daya is somebody who likes to travel a lot, especially on her own. Being an absolutely gorgeous woman, she has things to worry about. And I think a knife, personally, is the most practical. I think the knife is the best defensive tool for a woman, for anybody who's smaller, and is probably not gonna win in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. I don't really believe in mace or pepper spray. I know for a fact if somebody's motivated enough, they're just gonna go through it. And as well, it's hard to travel with that. Versus a knife, you can get anywhere, or you could use a pen, you could use a fork, you could be at, at a restaurant and grab what's there. I just think it's so practical. So I've been talking with Daya and she really wants to do some training with me. I'm gonna teach her a bit about what I know and to be honest, this is my first time doing knife training with a woman. We wanna talk a little bit about consent with this because I wanna make sure that I'm keeping the realism as close to it as I can without physically or emotionally damaging her. But I don't wanna to be too light to where she comes away with this for, with an inflated ego thinking that she can take down any guy with two moves with a knife. We're gonna to try to make that balance there. Daya, give them a few words about what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with. Safety is very important. So having somebody that is a safe person for you to practice with is obviously a great thing to do. Um, I trust Daniel. I know he's not gonna hurt me. We're in a beautiful, safe environment. It's perfect. So this is a great opportunity for me to get to better understand how to be safe, not just to have the confidence. And I do carry a knife generally back at home, but- And I gave her a knife as soon as she got here. And I, I need a knife to feel safe. And so this really, it's something that a lot of women should carry, you know, whether it's, it's just, just to cut something or it's whether useful. it's for self-defense. So this is great training. I trust him. Um, and I recommend this for other women out there as well. What are some things that you're comfortable with on the extreme end and what are some things you don't want done? Obviously don't really want somebody to grab me in feminine areas. Um, so I will not intentionally be grabbing right. her breasts. I will not intentionally be grabbing her crotch front right. or back. Right. Those are like the obvious main ones. And then I was like, okay, what about some non-obvious ones? And you do have one I wouldn't have known otherwise. And I do need you to further explain exactly yeah. how I can or can't. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what, actually, I think the best way to do this is pretend that I'm you. That's all right. Okay, paint where the zone is. No, on me. Oh. Yeah. Just like right there. Okay, so like the sensitive part of an armpit, basically. Yeah. Okay, this is a good thing to do, to like literally like paint it out so I actually know. So the scenario basically is simply that she has to somewhat stay around this box, this area here. She needs to sort of survive me and do enough damage for me to go away or get a lethal strike on me. Um, we've also talked about tapping out because I am gonna eventually get the knife away from her. I am gonna uh, grapple her and I'm probably gonna have an advantage, in which case she's gonna have to tap out. So that's a really important one. So how do you tap out? What are the two ways to tap out? You can either tap on the person. One, two, that's a tap out and then I stop. Everything goes out. Or you can say tap out, but in some- Tap, tap, tap. Yeah. Yep. Another way too, if you can't, you can do it with your feet too. People should be aware of that. All right, I think we pretty much got everything. We're really just gonna run this um, off the cuff here and see how it goes. We're gonna see where she's at. Ready? I'm still figuring out the right tempo to go with her, but she gets a nice little hit on my hip, so we're off to a good start. Ready? Oh, 
lot of these I can keep going through and we'll change the parameters of that as we get going. Because it has to, it'll have to be a good hit to me to move the stock. You can like, especially if you can get a neck one. Actually, Dave, we're doing this like serious, aren't we? Ready? <laughs> I was still testing what she could take because I didn't want to go too hard on her, but obviously her laughing showed me that it wasn't too hard. Now coming in for the grab, I definitely would have gotten stabbed a little bit and cut up, but it still would have stripped the knife from her if I was motivated enough. Still learning here, which is good. I would have suffered from it, but... Yeah. We'll replay these ones later. For now, I just want to get you a little bit more with it. Close. Again, I noticed her laughing and not quite taking it seriously, so I try to make it a little bit more realistic, giving her some slaps, and that really is what an attacker is going to be doing anyway, so I want to prepare her that the best I can. One. It wasn't super hard, but it was right here. Dea scores a nice hit right here on my neck. That was a good one. It wasn't super hard, but it was right here. You good? Yeah. Keep going. Being out of breath is even better. This is why I don't like the southpaw grip for knife fighting. Dea overextends her right elbow. I'm able to grab that, turn her body, and then eventually flip her back around. I'm sure I would have taken a small cut here on my arm, but eventually she lets go of the knife early. I'm able to bring her down to the ground. Exactly what we're trying to avoid. I probably would have gotten cut a little bit on that. There was barely any force on that last one, so I doubt it would have been anything too serious. But the run we did before, she had a really good it wasn't super hard, but it was right here. And my carotid's just back here, so depending how the blade went in, it could have hit the carotid, which is like the best. Ready? I'm trying my best to mix up my tactics and throw her off and give her better training for each session. Is that too hard? No. Right. I was trying to do that. Oh, you gotta... <laughs> here. I don't think I can do would have been pretty good. You came down with it and the blade, if you had the blade facing you, it would have opened me up to the center. That was good. Okay, yeah, you want to go to, to lesson? Yeah, sure. All right, first off, I don't think this is efficient. That's her lethal range. All the way, I'll go southpaw. Also, too, as she comes in for me, I mean, and like that's, that's the death note, is you come in this way for the slash and I get this. It's hard to do. If you're willing to take one hit though as the attacker, you're gonna you're gonna probably get this. So I don't think it's efficient. Where I want to try to train her as is this way. This way. I mean, this is the fact that you can do that. You can lunge out. That's just it too. Like even if you're like this, like lunge, not as efficient. And if you do get a stab in, you're probably gonna slice on the way out. So we're gonna work with that one a little bit, and then I'll teach you a few more things after that that you could be doing different. I'm also going to change and be a little bit more aggressive with my tactics. Um, I think also reading your attacker and their intent. Some people are going to see a knife and they're just going to run away. Other people, maybe they're on methamphetamine or PCP or whatever. You've got to deal that damage. But for now, we're going to try this new stance with her, holding it out and see how she does. She's not as comfortable with this style, but it is better. Ready? Pretty good. So the flex. She ended up being just above my solar plex, still hitting my chest bone. Really, really hard. You're not going to get the aorta. The aorta is back against the spine. Although that knife would have been long, so you need a really good hit right here. Oh, that's okay. Good job. That's got a little bit of space to it. And again, I'm going to do my best to not just tell her she got the round when she barely gets me, because really I should keep going. But that's the muscle memory I need to get into, because when I used to do knife training, if you could get a hit, they got the round, sort of like fencing. 
But this isn't like fencing. This is like, hmm, would that really have slowed me down? Or maybe we'll start even doing three hits to slow me down. You good? All right. Couple slashes. All right, all right, you got that round. I really like how Daya kept the round going. She had pretty good form, got in there for multiple hits while I was a little distracted. All right, you ready? Day got a little too ambitious in this round. She lunged forward a bit more than she should have. She wasn't going for my hands, she was only going for my torso, which allowed me to get a solid grip on her wrist and then turn her and flip her over. Again, I'm not trying to hurt her, and if anything, I actually ended up spraining my thumb on this one as I rolled away not to hurt her hand. But you can see she let go of the knife a little soon, and unfortunately now she's away from the implement, and she taps out pretty quickly when she realizes that happened. You start to give up as soon as I did before you go to the ground. When you're falling, like I think I learned it best from snowboarding. When you're falling, like, you can still be in control. The more often you do it, the more your brain learns to use that timing as you're going down. If you ever do like jujitsu, like while they're getting tossed, they're still thinking and still reacting. It sucks, but you're not over. And there's tactics when you're on the ground versus when you're up, you can still be going through. The big thing is keeping that knife. And here's one of the first thoughts. Another thing, switching your knife. Again. If I get a hold of this, maybe you can suddenly switch it over. This is the time, yeah. If you're gonna go for that, what I would do, so. So you get my knife hand, somehow get it over. I prefer to drop, honestly. Cause it's like, what are you gonna do from here? There's a lot to go after once you get down here or this. It's just an idea, it's just one way to do it. All right, we're gonna start changing things, making it a little bit harder and she needs to get two hits that are soft or light or I don't think would be like super fatal or one fatal hit. Sound good? Good, 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 she got me. To mix things up, I go for a single leg takedown and she misses right over my head, which is really bad. But she stays in the fight, gets multiple hits the whole way as I'm going down, and I could not be more proud of her. This was a great moment showing that she really learned what I was trying to teach her, and she stayed in the fight, causing me ultimately to lose the round even after all this was done. Good job. That was really good though. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I hope that got on camera. Like, that was the perfect speech where I was like, even on your way down, you could be doing damage. And I, I mean, they weren't great hits, but all the whole way down, I'm feeling tap, tap, tap. And I'm like, that's not her hand, that's the knife. And so I didn't keep wrestling because I was like, she got me. So good job on that one. <laughs> I literally just screamed. I thought, no, they were like up on my back, everything. It was a really, it was a good, that was a really good round. Okay. It was good too, because that was exactly what we were just talking about. Yeah. I'll take a quick water break and then we'll stick right into it. Having fun? Yeah. <laughs> it's just more comfortable for me. I'm used to swinging, slashing like this, so. It feels good, but it's just not as effective. Your reach right. and your ability to jab and stab, and it's the stabbing distance you get on it. It's really great. And in a minute, we'll change up tactics to like the truth of knife fight. Well, I'll just say it now. The truth of knife fighting is, is if you both have a knife, like, unless you are such an expert and the other person has no clue and is inebriated, everybody's getting cut. Normally what gets cut is the hands. Because as you're knife fighting, they lunge at you with their knife or whatever, and you're getting hands or getting wrists. That's what really gets cut up, and that's probably what she's actually gonna go with. I'm sort of trying to take a stance of like, I don't wanna get stabbed at all, because most guys are gonna have that. Most attackers don't wanna get cut. But we're, I guess we are simulating like a highly aggressive, highly motivated attacker. So we can go back and forth with it, and that might be fun. Maybe we don't want to get fully sandy one day. We might practice as an attacker who's not extremely motivated. One slash anywhere is good to go. All right, so we've been talking a little bit about tactics and what she could be doing different, and also myself getting comfortable with the role of an attacker, what I could be doing different. We're gonna be changing the rules a bit to focus on the, like, the hardest mode, which is an attacker who is gonna come at you no matter what, like the absolute worst of attackers. Truth is, most won't do that. If you do a little bit of blood loss, most people are gonna walk away, run away, whatever. It's just not worth it to them. But if you can prepare for this one, obviously you could be prepared for anything. If somebody's willing to attack you like that and you're a woman, you have a knife, you have every right to like cut them and bleed them dry. So the rules of engagement, we'll call it on this one, is she needs to get 
three light hits on me to stop me, and I'll try to not use something if I can that she's already hit. But but otherwise, it's gonna be three light hits or one really good hit or some sort of a mixture of those. There you go. What I will say is, this is hard for him to do, not because, you know, he's great with attacks, like he's obviously strong, but it's hard to get into a mindset of an attacker when you're a good person. So, you know, this isn't but for a mild person to do. This is if you actually genuinely want somebody to get stronger. So thank you for actually teaching me this. And I understand it's it's difficult because yeah. that's not a position that any good guy wants to be in. It's playing an attacker. I'm used to wrestling men and, and exactly. also men without a knife. And also for the sake of it doesn't have to be a knife. It could be a screwdriver, it could be a pen, it could be a stick. Like you Anything can get really sharp. creative. We're gonna continue our break and then we're gonna get right back to it. Taking some good hits so far though. You too. So again, rules of engagement. Three soft hits, one solid hit. It's a verbalization here. Oh, oh, good hit, good hit. This is one of my favorite rounds that Daya had. I was pretty flighty with her, but she still managed to get great hits on me in both the belly and the neck. She should have been going for my hands a bit more. She could have gotten a few more strikes in, but she got some clear hits that definitely would have killed me. It got me pretty much on the jug that I say it was like one little light hit but then she got me like square right here and that's a good lesson i guess here is that once i start to get a hold like before i get a hold i would recommend going for the hands yeah really I, the I hands are out there. yeah every time she's going for my torso exclusively right. and it is a little bit tough for her because she can't go for my head and that is a great target by the way because if you get a cut especially above the eye run a little bit of blood into the eyes like that's awesome Eyeball. yeah but anyway but that's really good that what she did right there is i did get a hold but i didn't get the knife hand just yet so what did she do? She went for the neck, and that's really what you do. Before, you, before the distance is gapped, go for the hands. Once you get in close, go for the vitals. Really go for the neck if you can. And the other priority, I guess, is like, don't let your knife hand get taken away. Say even I am in here and I'm doing this, how do you get your, get your, get your knife to the other hand? All right, hold on, I didn't make that, I didn't make that hard enough. All right, so get your knife to the other hand. There you go. Oh, sorry. That's all right, I flexed for it. Okay, cool. It was a good hit though, but I saw it coming, thankfully. And it's gonna be really hard for me to do anything about that. I can't see it, I don't know what you're doing it. It's a great way to do it. All right, you ready? Oh, you all right? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Oh as soon as I went for that, it was like not the This log. was an incredibly foolish mistake on my part, and I only put this in the video to teach people what not to do, even if at my expense. I want you to know safety is paramount when you're training. Thankfully, she was just fine, the log was squishy. She did great though with the knife on the way down, but I didn't think she was gonna get that far to my left when she went for that. Up there, just so you know. Here you go. Alright. So, this is really good because I was waiting to try to do this. Disarming and then keep going. She got down and then she said, wait, I don't know what to do now. Yeah. That's the point of the knife. You don't want to lose the knife. The knife is your safety. Yeah. I would say it's better to take this is your position than to lose the knife. And like, even this is your position to not lose the knife. The knife is so important to never lose. The only other exception to that would be also don't get it pinned underneath you. And that's what I did to her quite a bit in the beginning. Yeah, sure, you've got the knife, but if I pin your arm like this, what do you do? Switch. Exactly! Wonderful. I'm way off my back. You're gonna splash closer. Now you're gonna move the dresser. Those are good light hits, so those are super, super light. She had a good stab to my hip bone, but that wouldn't do any damage, just hurt a lot. Yeah, that was enough hits, that was enough hits, that was good. And that's what happened, she got enough little strikes on me here and there. I forget where the last one went, but I was like, yeah. Daya finally learns to dive the knife a little deeper, getting into my back, and probably would have gotten my belly good too. She's kept trying to hang on to the knife, but when you do okay. When she went down though, like you were only looking at me and you started punching. And yeah, yeah, I think she went for my throat. 
it just doesn't matter. The knife is the only one at that point. So she could have focused on the knife a little bit. The other thing too is like when you get tossed, try to roll a little bit more. That one I was pretty well on you, so it was a dirty roll too, so like I was already there. Anybody who watches grappling or jujitsu probably thinks I'm an idiot, but we're not going for professionals here. Anyway. So I'm gonna do a quick lesson to break up the constant bouts here. Using your environment, and I know Krav Maga is really big on this, using your environment would be the next thing. When I disarmed her back here and she hit the ground, she goes, I don't know what to do now, but I don't blame her. Here is what I would do. I'm the dainty girl, the knife is away from me, I'm down here, kind of like you're about to attack me, sand. <laughs> sand straight to the eyes. That's one I would have been doing quite a bit, and I wanted to tackle her in the water, so I could use the water instead, because the water's a great um, a really cool trick I heard about is you're in a restaurant and some guy's coming at you. Take hot sauce, cup it in your hand, and have that ready to go, and you just smear across the eyes. That one actually would, again, because you can't see, and then if you have a knife as well and you can't see, you're gonna do great. Anyway. It's about protection, not about perfection. Um, I hope this has been informative for you guys. I certainly learned quite a few things just trying to do it but I bet you learned more than a few things. What would you say would be some of the biggest lessons before the battery runs out? So key takeaways. One, holding like this is much better. Farther reach, just much better. Um, I generally hold like this, so it's taking me a minute, but this is how you should hold. Um, other thing, when you're on the ground, keep that knife in your hand. No matter what, keep that knife in your hand. Or switch it to the other. Or keep switch, it in your possession. Keep it on you. Of course, be careful of landing on it. That's one thing we didn't really talk about. And I was actually focused on that whenever we rolled, is am I landing on the knife? Because I still believe this is a knife, which is great training to be doing. Right. Um, one thing that's not accurate is the length of this knife. I would actually cut this knife down so it's only a four inch blade, because that's what she had that's to work common. with. That's common, yeah. And so she did have a big advantage on me because it's a, it's a small sword, basically. It's yeah. like, a, like a K bar style. Right, so three key takeaways. One, hold your knife like this. Actually, sorry, by the way, it's, it's like this. Okay. Yeah, you want it. You want to kind of point the fingers right, forward. Right, gripping. So hold your knife like this. Okay. Two, don't let somebody get your knife out of your hand. If you don't have it in your hand, it's probably going to get used against you, just like any other weapon. And three, if you're on the ground, don't give up. Keep going. You can try kicking. You can try. I mean, best thing would be have your knife. But if for some reason the knife is way far away from both you and the attacker. Do as much as you can. Go for the eyeballs, whatever it is, something. Especially if you can create you. just a two second gap. Yeah. Just because you lost the knife doesn't mean you can't get it back. You could obviously, like, he could do some move, some way that gets the knife out of your hands, but then he's also sacrificed his position. Take advantage of that, then go get your knife back. Right. Just remember, nothing's off the table in a life or death situation. Do what you need to do. Hope you guys learned a lot. Cheers. So for the past probably like hour, we've been going over the knife fight training. And I gotta say like, we're both learning so much. We're learning about like how badly off her posture is, which is harder for me to see from the front, but the camera angle is great. And I just gotta say, this is like, like the beach session was obviously good for training, but then doing this here with the computer and talking about it, really solidifies. and then going back out there is a way to do it. Yeah. This is great. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video. I hope you found it insightful and had a few good laughs along the way. I know we did. I'm sure this video is going to ruffle more than a few feathers, as anything on the internet always does. But I hope you learned something new and share it in the comments below. Thanks.